Hello, I'm David Dawson, Director of the Workshop Museum. I'm going to be talking today about West Kennet Longbarrow, uh, a Neolithic uh, tomb dating to about 3600 BC. Now, in the museum, we have, picking up the webcam here, we have a reconstruction of one of the chambers of the, of the, the, the tomb, and we have finds from the site in the case over there. Now, the way the tomb works is really interesting. There's, there's a huge long mound with the chambers just at this end. And then the way the, uh, the chambers work is that there is a central passageway, two chambers on each side, and one at the end. And this was the burial place for 45 people. Um, most of the bodies were was just, uh, the bones were sort of arranged, as you can see in the image here, with skulls and long bones in a pretty random sort of order. They're very jumbled, except in the, passive, in the chamber at the end, there was a man who was sitting bolt upright against one of the stones here, looking down the passageway, perhaps towards the, the, the rising sun at dawn at the equinox. And in the reconstruction, we have the bones here in the chamber, giving an idea of how they were laid out. You'll be pleased to know these aren't real. <laughs> these are resin. You can pick these up for a, a skeleton up for 60 quid off eBay, a resin one of course. Now, the finds are really interesting because they give a clue as to how the monument was actually used. And as you can see in the case here, we have Neolithic pottery and also some burnt bone and scoops. Now, that all suggests that what they were doing was eating and drinking at the tomb. That's a bit weird, but these are placed outside the tomb and we can start to make things up uh, about, perhaps tell a story about how the tomb was used. Um, the 45 people, um, the bodies were very jumbled. There's one young man who had his skull in one chamber, his shoulder blade and upper left arm in a second. They must have been still jointed together by sinew. And then his feet in a third. That's very strange. And what we think is that they were practicing a type of sky burial. They were placing the bodies on the timber platform and letting the body decompose, bits be eaten by animals and taken away. And then they gathered up what was left and put it in the chamber. The other possibility is what they were doing at the equinox is they were fetching some of the bones of the ancestors, bringing them out into the light and perhaps using them in some sort of a ceremony. And we also have, in the case, we have uh, little necklaces made of seashells and shale. Um, the shale comes from Dorset, so that suggests they were bringing things, or bring people up from Dorset along the river Avon past Stonehenge, where Stonehenge was going to be, up to West Kennet. And then in the top, we have, um, let's see if we can adjust that better so you can see it, we have four things that we've labelled in, in the uh, display as being bone beads. Now you see they have holes and they're, they're sort of hollow. Now if you were to tie a, a rope to one of those, this piece of string, and whiz them round over your head, they would make a noise, make a sound, um, like a bull roarer that people in uh, Australia, first peoples in Australia have used. Now if you add that to, uh, add to that flutes, uh, drums, but which may have been made of wood and leather, they will have rotted away. But you start to have this idea of music and chanting and dancing. And of course, as the passageway and the chambers were open, the sa that sound would have reverberated amongst the chambers. And um, a musician called Steve Marshall has actually tried to recreate the sort of sounds that might have been made in prehistory. And so that might have been a ceremony that was um, honouring the ancestors. Perhaps worship is a bit of a strong word, but something like that. So the tomb was in use for only a very short period. The, 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 twi the 45 people died within about 30 years of each other. Um, and then it was left open until about 2400 BC. Now, this is a really interesting time because this is when um, the metal is first used in Britain. So it's the beginning of the Bronze Age, and particularly we have this type of pottery up here called beakers. And in here we have an illustration of a fairly 
typical beaker period burial. This one is a round way down above devices. A crouched skeleton with a beaker at his feet and a bronze dagger. Now, people like him, his ancestry was of peoples from across the other side of the Black Sea. So not that they came here all at once. They, this idea, these ideas, this new, um, perhaps it's religion or belief, uh, expressed in these burials. This came across Europe fairly slowly. It took about 500 years, so between 500 and 1,000 years to arrive here in Britain. Now at West Kennet, what they did is they took, made two of these amazing beakers, and it's the two you can see in front of you, and placed them upside down at the top of one of the chambers after it had been filled with earth and chalk. Um, the, the, the beaker in front of me, this one, is uh, well known for being perhaps the best beaker in Britain. Um, it's rather amusing because we commissioned a replica from a chap called Graham Taylor, who runs a business called Potted History. This is it. It's a great thing that we can, I can pick this up. And what you can see is the, the, the way that there is sort of diamond shaped decoration here all the way around. Now, when I phoned him up to ask him to make a beaker for me, for, um, for use for, in a, a, with schools, he, get, he named a price. I said, how much is a beaker? And he gave me a price. And then I said, I want this one, not just any old beaker, any of these others. What I want is the West Kennet one. There was a bit of a silence at the other end of the phone. And after a bit, he said, he named his real price, which is about three times that of the standard beaker. That's because of the skill that's been used to mark out the decoration. Now, what I suspect is going on in this period about 2400 BC is shortly after the Sarsons go up at Stonehenge. Um, it's when Silbury Hill is starting to be constructed and the stones are starting to be put up at Avery. So, is what's going on at West Kennet um, that in the Neolithic period, 3600 BC, people were honouring or worshipping the ancestors? And then with the arrival of the beakers and this new fashion or this new group of people from across Europe, perhaps what has changed, they're changing their religion. Perhaps it's now the sun and the moon that are important to them. 